Okay, the next question is number seven, and that is what other product you have used besides henna? Yes, so um, I have used the Hagua, which hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> I've actually never heard it being pronounced, only written down. But um, yeah, I've just been recently getting into it because there's so many people asking for the black henna yeah. that I kind of want to have a natural alternative for people. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And for those people that, you know, maybe want to take a shower that same day, yeah. you know, you can, you can take a shower with it and you can oh, okay. wash because you're supposed to wash it off rather than with henna, you know, you want to totally avoid water. Mm -hmm. So um, I felt that was like a really cool alternative to have. So I have been... Oh using the hagua a lot right and i've used the white henna though it was just you know body paint that i just put into a cone just for a photo shoot and um but i don't think i'm going to really offer that mm -hmm. as um, something because it doesn't last so long that right. people aren't you know you, you don't want to have to charge someone you know for something that'll last like for a day for or a little two. bit even though I guess that's what face painting is, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, but we're offering cool. a different service. We're yeah. offering something that lasts a lot longer than... Exactly. This, yeah. So how, I mean, have you um, mixed the... I know recently a lot of artists are mixing oh, yeah. Jaguar, Hagua, and Henna. <laughs> and they call it like Hangua or something. Yeah, yeah. I have really you, want to try that, honestly. You have, I've been wanting to... I'm curious about it. Me too. I think what you just get the more like the juice, right? Yeah, I think they just combine it together. I wonder how you that will be. You guys can let us know. Yeah, <laughs> if you have already done it, I would love to hear yes. like, how do you do that because I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think you just replace, you know, your lemon juice or water or I tea so. with the jagua juice. <laughs> right. And then I think you just mix it up, and I, from what I've, you know, researched, then you just basically kind of would treat it like more like henna. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, with the water restrictions and stuff I like that? I think so, yeah. It, I think it is pretty cool. For me, I did also do the white uh, body paint. Oh, yes. I actually didn't, I was insistent on calling it not white henna, but it was a losing battle because <laughs> people knew it only as white I henna. Know, yeah. And so I was like, it's, I, I tried different names for it, but in the end I stopped using it was because I felt it wasn't authentic enough. For me, it's, it was more about the authentic part. Yeah. And also the fact that I felt that it faded away after a while and it started looking a little bit muddy and dirty after yeah. like three days. And so I stayed away from it. I stopped offering it. But I have decorated other things. Oh, so, yeah. And I have used like um, acrylic paint in the cone in the same way and I yes. decorate things. Yeah, I've done that before too. That's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, I mean, I find that the acrylic paint has the same because yeah. So it works together. It feels pretty natural. Yeah, so and if you're watching this um, and you've never, you know, tried to do henna but you're really curious, that's one good way to start. Um, it's just a little to, bit of acrylic comb. Yeah, just get some acrylic paint, just put it and make a comb. There's so many videos on YouTube. And you can do canvas, mm -hmm. you could do I've done candles. It on wood, candles, yeah. yeah. I prefer doing henna on candles actually. That's true. I you know I've tried that before. Mm -hmm. But I noticed um, it kind of, when it would dry, the mm -hmm. paste would get a little crackly and it yeah. would kind of break up in the design. Mm -hmm. But, um, you have yeah. to seal it really fast. Oh, yeah, yes. that's a trick. Okay. But, um, I, I find that the skin or the, the skin had a similar feeling as a candle. Oh, so, you know, sometimes if I'm doing henna on paper like you did, it's like it doesn't feel okay. Even with oh, those yeah. practice yeah, yeah. Um, acrylic boards. Oh, yeah. But the, on the candle, I felt that it was very Because it's similar. round, you know. Round and softer and yeah. a waxy feel, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. So, I enjoy on candle a lot. How do you feel about henna um, being famous and how it affects your business? Henna is taking... I mean, it's becoming a lot storm. more. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's because of Pinterest and Instagram. Yeah. And I know some celebrities have been using it also, but I find mostly it's from Pinterest. A lot of people are like, oh yeah, the Pinterest, I've seen it. Oh yeah. And it has become a lot famous. Where I am, it's a small community, so we don't have a lot of different artists. There are people who are interested, and there are people who want to think about that line. Because in the end, what we're doing is a business. Yeah. So we have to protect our business and it becomes really challenging because sometimes people come up and they just look at you doing a design and they're like, oh, this is super easy. Anybody can do it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you have no idea how many, you know, years of practice it has taken for me to get to this point in here. And if you're looking at my page 30, when you haven't even done your page number one, yeah. it becomes a little bit insulting at that point. Yeah. I think I think if you are going to give it a fair chance, at least give 
the henna the respect it deserves and don't look at it as the dollar bills but look at exactly. it as the art and i think yeah. a lot of people now because it's becoming famous exactly they're trying to hop on the bandwagon make right. a quick buck and you know just yeah. kind of and i'm like well you know you can try and i'm like go for it because yeah. you're bad at it right now i'm not afraid to say that because I know you've never picked up the cone, yeah. and I know you're going to be bad. Give it a try, yeah. you know, and we'll let the people decide. Because in the end, it's the community that we're serving. Exactly. And I also feel even if we have a different artist in the same community, which is not the case for me yet, mm -hmm. but I feel that there's enough of it to go around. Yeah, it's not totally like is. Yeah. I don't have to feel um, nervous or scared yeah right yeah but i mean i know that san diego is huge yeah san diego yeah. i mean i don't there's probably billions of henna artists i don't even know about that are yeah. out there but um for me though at least where i've set up because henna is becoming you know really popular and um you know people are getting it quite a lot there's been several people that have set up because i set up by the beach mm -hmm. i have like my own tent and everything and there's been other people that have, you know, tried to do it, even though, you know, they're not they haven't practiced, obviously, because I've had it where someone went to them before they saw my booth, mm -hmm. and then they kind of got discouraged, like, oh man, like, what is this? You know, I could oh, tell it was wow. really bad. Like the honestly. comparison at, at the artistry. Yeah, like she was really, really sad, and she actually washed it off, oh. and then she ended up getting one from me and trying to get her money back from the other people so I mean if you're trying oh, to get no. into it just because it's popular now you can make some money you know you don't want to cheapen the arts you know I don't think that's and then people if they have a bad experience and they think oh well other henna artists are gonna be bad too you know yeah and then they might not want to get it ever again mm -hmm. and um and oftentimes <clears throat> I have people that come up and they question they're like oh is this all your work you know because they've had experiences where people other henna artists, henna artists have like posted pictures of other people's work, yeah. and then they've they can't replicate it. So then people kind of get suspicious, like, oh, well, that's probably not their own work. You know, it's not going to look like that. Right. You know, so sometimes the art can become cheapened like that. I like how you put that that the art becomes cheapened. Yeah. So f for you now that there's a lot of henna artistry everywhere, you've noticed that if somebody is doing uh, uh, being unfair or being unethical, basically, it affects yeah. the art itself. Yeah, and I actually told at least that particular person that you know maybe you should try to you know increase your skill before you come come out here and you know try to sell it or you know get, get money for it because obviously people aren't satisfied and and then they even told me straight up they're like we don't care if they don't like the design we're just out here to make money and i was oh. just like you know oh, that's no. so sad because you know? you're missing what henna is all about yeah here. like oh. it's not it's not about the it's art not or the, exactly mm -hmm. it's, it's it's something more than that and and, and besides that, I mean, it's a service that you want to offer to the best of your ability. That's to right. Satisfy. Anything you do. Yeah, anything you do, you know, yeah. you should be up to par, up to standard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to have happy clients. I mean, it's not like, okay, I'm going to open up a restaurant, but I don't know how to cook. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah. You, have, you should, you know, take the time to become, you know, somewhat proficient, like really good and then you know have the confidence that people will be satisfied right i mean i tell people also who come up to me for example they want to get um a permanent tattoo somewhere and mm -hmm. i am like you know what if you're going to decide what tattoo you're getting you're just not going to go to any place exactly right because you're going to have it on you so you want to research the art be like okay this artist does this kind of work and this is what i'm after yeah so that same goes with us like but if you are putting fake pictures <laughs> then you are misleading people yeah you know but then again once the person is done in front of you and you're replicating the you know master artist work is and it looks crappy yeah then i mean they're just not gonna come again exactly they're so not. they're you know it, they're selling themselves short too exactly it won't last very long but and they go to you know you and they're like oh my <laughs> god this is not what i paid for <laughs> yeah i felt really bad but yeah. you know you do the do. best no you just educate <laughs> no but like you educate people and yeah. then you just let them be the you know best judge of what they're getting and exactly. i think at the end 
educating the community and I feel actually positive that my community is really small right now yeah. because I can educate them exactly. and so they can make their own decisions later on. Exactly. And they won't ever have to go to someone this block henna or yeah. you know, something, something like artificial that. Dyes. Yeah, and I'm like, don't get this. Yes. Don't get this. <laughs> oh, one thing too, another thing, because it's becoming more, I guess, mainstream, you can say, mm. I think it's also being targeted by um, other groups on social media, you know, with the whole cultural appropriation is a really oh, big yes. hot topic now, mm -hmm. <laughs> super big. And so a lot of henna artists that I feel are like super, you know, they are like super trying to appreciate the mm -hmm. culture, honor the henna, respect it, yeah. and are actually doing it for the love of the art and people, you know, really love it. But still, I feel like because it's so big right now, it's still being targeted. Like, oh, well, they're, you know, their body's white, so they can't do henna or something yes. like that. You know, I mean, coming from my background, I haven't experienced that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, there's so many artists I follow yeah. who are from the Western background. They have no physical or biological connection with that region. Or, I mean, you know, you can't even talk about the region because henna, henna's origins are so so diverse yeah. but people seem to think it's only from India yeah, I know or, I mean yeah. it's like but it's so diverse but then I haven't had to feel that but I feel so bad because I'm like you know if you are going to be judging those artists like their love and appreciation for henna sometimes I feel it's so much more than I have I mean you can listen to them talk about the history of henna with the passion and the education I'm like I don't know this stuff and I am from that region you know yeah. so it's like i think when it comes to the appropriation part you just you know it's art and i think art can never truly be appropriated yeah exactly you know? it just is adopted yeah yeah and i think it's a beautiful thing it's you know becoming more accepted and everywhere and i think it can actually do a lot of good because oftentimes the argument is oh well you know we were once like discriminated against because we had henna on and people thought we were weird but now like it's so popular like you know you can't take it from us or something like that and for me it's just i feel like it doesn't really solve the real problem of you know we're trying to bring people together right right that's you know, why do we want to create more conflict than creating this you versus me kind of mentality right. that's never going to solve i mean i understand and i appreciate the struggle that people who have gone through I mean, it has to be difficult. Yeah. But then, when when we are coming up as henna artists, we're not trying to cause that division, or exactly. we're not trying to rekindle that. But now we're saying, hey, look, everybody's doing it. It is something beautiful and it's common. Yeah. And now it is opening up doors to other cultures, to other exactly. ways of thoughts. Yeah. And it's it's a beautiful thing, I think. That's definitely yeah, I think it's beautiful. Too, Art can so. change the world. Yes, <laughs> exactly. It can. <laughs> Nine is, have you ever come across someone doing unnatural henna? Let's see, uh, let's see. I don't think, I've, I've never come across anyone doing black henna. Mm -hmm. Though I've had many clients come and tell me that they've gotten black henna. And some, in some cases, they've actually gotten reactions from it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think I've, I've seen other people using, um, what, like the store-bought cones. Yes. Yeah, so that's cones. yeah the pre-made cones. Mm -hmm. I have come into contact with that from afar, but um, I've never like you know suggested that they use natural henna. I never really like you know talked to them. Right. But I, I had known about it that it was being being done. Um, I was in a situation at one point where um, I was invited to an event to do henna there, and there was also going to be uh, it was specifically black henna is going to be there. And when you're coming from a business perspective, <laughs> it's scary because, I mean, we know that the dangers, <laughs> yeah, dangers to your health that the black henna can bring. And if you're coming up from the insurance perspective, then if somebody's in that same, you know, circle and they just got henna from the other artist who was offering the black henna, then you are liable at that point. You are vulnerable at that point. Not liable, because I shouldn't be liable, but that person can be confused who did it. Exactly. So I was, I had to be like, I'm not going to be there. Because you oh, have to make yeah, that. Yeah. And sometimes people also, I like to tell people that you cannot undervalue your principles. Like stick to your principles. If your principle is this, 
even if they're paying you like you know the biggest paycheck you've seen yeah i'm sorry i cannot offer this to you and i cannot be with you when you're yeah. doing that you have to have integrity for your business yes you know? just be true because don't I, I think many times i've read and heard of people who are very successful and they always say that you don't want to chase success you just want to be authentic to yeah. yourself and then the success will come your way exactly and so if I'm getting a paycheck I mean that's only gonna last me for a month or two but it's not going to last me for the life of my business which I'm jeopardizing if exactly. I'm saying so I have come across and I'm going to be honest here before I knew any better I was also using the pre-made cones thankfully I stayed away from black and always yeah but pre-made cones we use them and yeah in India I mean I hadn't I had no idea I was like oh look kind of yeah <laughs> you think oh my god there's so many cones and normally they're very inexpensive 10 rupees is like yeah so and even if you were to get it now on Amazon or something here oh, yeah. you can get like I don't know how many for like you know fraction of a cost exactly but then if you start using the natural kind of you notice like your art improves yeah exponentially <laughs> exactly. because the consistency is so good and it's not watery and then the color is beautiful yeah and then you read about how bad it is exactly. for you you're like oops, <laughs> like, oops like, I, I don't know, know what that. damage I did to myself already <laughs> exactly so, so but you know you learn you improve yeah. and you know but sometimes people are really firm about black yes. henna for some reason i know. think it comes from the cultural background yeah that's what i experienced they're like oh we use this stuff you know blah, blah, blah. and i'm like dude you can use it i'm not gonna be the one to do it on you yeah. <laughs> like i'm not gonna be part of that whole exchange well and you way. know fire still burns whether or not like you believe like yeah. it can so yeah. <laughs> people can get a reaction even if you're like okay, i like so that <laughs> it doesn't matter it's not like what you believe in it's yeah. reality yeah it's like objective yeah there are harmful chemicals in there yeah it can it's, get it's scientific reactions. it is proven so let's just stay away from it let's yeah. just put it out there yes put out the fire yeah <laughs> All right, next question is number 10. Are we there already? I know, our last one. Last question. So what is your ideal festival setup? My ideal festival setup is to have somebody help me out. Because I feel overwhelmed at some point. Yeah. Uh, I did, uh, Ren Fair I did, it was alone by myself. And it was, I mean, people were really uh, good. Like, they really wanted henna there. Yeah. And so I was torn between doing, answering questions, getting the money and dealing with that, and then doing the art. And I, I mean, I had to adjust my regular setup normally. Like, I'm separate. The art I do separate, and the, the business is taken separately. Yeah. But at this point, I was the only one. So I yeah. found it was very hectic. And I felt that it was taken away from the henna experience of the person who was in front of me. That's true. And so normally I my ideal setup is to do it with somebody else who deals with people, answers the questions we talked about fifty times. Yeah. They do that and I just do <laughs> the, the art. Game. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. What about yours? Um, that? let's see. I have um if I do festivals or street fairs with my husband, um, which we sometimes import stuff from India as well, so mm. it's kinda like a double you offer different things. Yeah, um, but usually he'll kind of take over that aspect of answering questions, taking money, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes when I'm set up um, by the beach, then it's just me by myself. Right. And um, for me, I, I, I've kind of gotten a flow. I have like several chairs lined up like this, mm -hmm. and I'm like right here. And so they kind of just kind of one by one kind of cycle through like that. And because I'm answering the questions so much, everyone's listening and yeah. so sometimes if someone's there like they'll answer the questions like for me yeah oh i have that too <laughs> sometimes that happens and that's really cool and usually the only time that they have to ask me something is they'll like take the book and like oh how much is this one and i'll just tell them like the price and i do have some information about like some you know the questions that are commonly asked like right. what is it how long does it last um so but sometimes it does get overlooked and we we're kind of talking like uh, about this before I would like to have it maybe a little bit bigger so that people can kind of see it better mm -hmm. and um, but for me usually it's just by myself um, I have you know one small tent I like to hand paint I hand paint like all my signs so I don't okay. use banners or mm -hmm. anything like that you print out but everything's kind of more um, custom made oh, like nice. I, I print it out you know more like 8 by 11 like kind of full-size pictures right. and I made like a display board like this and then I painted it and like drilled it all in so I kind of like the look where it's a little bit more 
you know, DIY, Put together, like yeah. kind of crafty, you know. It's beautiful, yeah. So, but then also the tapestry, though, that you gotta have the tapestry. Yeah, <laughs> so something to draw the eye <laughs> yes. away from the table, and yes. I think. Like pictures, I think is huge. Pictures yeah. Too. So, what would be ideal then? Like, do you prefer doing it alone, oh, yeah. or do um, you prefer doing it with your husband? Um, it's nice. Well, actually, I had one time where my friend recently, actually just recently, she came out to the booth with me, mm -hmm. and um, just to kind of hang out. And um, she ended up though kind of being like my booth babe. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, actually, wow, this is really nice. <laughs> so maybe I will try it maybe in the summertime. Yeah. Like hiring someone to to be a booth babe. So. Right. It becomes a little bit, you have to find somebody who's trustworthy. Yes, that's somebody. Indeed. Yeah, so that is a little bit scary, but I've been uh, grateful to have found several people who I just recycle. That's good. Not, not recycle, <laughs> like rotate. We know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and they, you know, help out, and I prefer it that way so much more. Probably gonna try to do that, so. Hey, if you're in the San Diego area, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hit her up. Hit me up. Well, in any any case, though, so you are in San Diego, and if you go to gopihana.com, you can schedule a, uh, appointments with you. Uh, normally, do you do appointments through your website, or do you like to? Um, it's both. On my website, um, it sends it to my phone. So oh, okay, okay. Then it ends up being through text message anyways. So. Okay. So. Or you can message me on Instagram, gopihana. We have a lot of pictures and images people can get inspired from, and they can definitely know the kind of work that you do. And it's good to know that we're doing our own thing, that we don't put pictures of other artists' exactly. work. Exactly. So, and I know I like to have my little watermark there always, so people are like, oh, you did all that? I'm like, yeah, you can see my watermark all yeah. over those pictures. Yeah, like, not for that's, sure. That's one thing I've been thinking about because I guess I'm kind of lazy, you know. Like, it's, anno it's a little bit annoying. Yeah. Because you have to watermark the whole, all the pictures, but it's def definitely a preference. Yeah, yeah. And I know some artists don't like to do it. They're yeah. like, we don't want to do it, we want it to be an open thing, and it's totally depends yeah, on, yeah. on what your business and how do you view yourself and things exactly. like that. But definitely she is an amazing artist mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to hopefully doing it. We're going to swap. We're going to yes. swap after this, guys. We, we are. <laughs> it's going to happen. Thank you very much for watching and until next time. Hannah on. But I can't stand her. She always knows everything better. She also goes regularly to Oral's class. From tomorrow, you'll be going there together. Now, all